Good morning. At this time, we will have a Mr. John Demos, thank you, will come up uh, this morning and talk about stewardship. So I am really looking forward to what he has to say. So I will be right here listening to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Father. Good morning. Good morning. So... Eight years ago, I walked up here and gave my first talk on stewardship, and I had a little more hair then. I don't remember if I had a beard then, but I'm, I assure you it was not quite this, this white down here as it is now. Um, but today, I am giving my last talk on stewardship in the role of stewardship chairman. You're not getting rid of me. I am uh, pleased to be able to work side by side with my friend Rob with our youth going forward and focusing on that. I'm even more pleased to tell you that George and Angela Georgialis have graciously offered to take over the stewardship ministry. If you don't know George and Angela, you guys are in for a treat. They are going to be fantastic. We've met a couple of times, spoken multiple times about their vision for stewardship, and they are the absolute right choice to take our stewardship ministry to the next level. So please, if you've liked what I've done with stewardship, please give them support and love. If you don't like what I've done with stewardship, boy, you know what would tell me? Be having a great kickoff for 2019 in my absence. That would really show me. All kidding aside, we're, we're off to a very good start to 2018 as we're closing in on wrapping up, and we have a chance to make it a great 2018. So... If you're behind in your giving and your circumstances allow you to catch up, please do so. If you're ahead of your giving and your circumstances allow you to exceed your goal, please do so. If you have thought of a new ministry that you want to get involved in or perhaps start from scratch, please do so. It's never too late. And if that carries over into the 2019 kickoff, that'll be great. So as I leave my role as stewardship chair, I'm going to leave you with two things today. One is a lesson learned, and two is a goal going forward. So on the lesson learned, I've gone to several seminars, and read several books about stewardship, found all these tips and tricks, and they're, they're wonderful ones. Own the watch and you'll own the wallet. If you give people's time, they'll give you your money. Um, have a personal touch. Do in-home visits. But I have to be honest with you, those are all tips and tricks. The most important lesson about stewardship and giving I learned in kindergarten. God loves a cheerful giver. If you give out of guilt or anangi or pressure, those gifts don't last. If you give out of love and out of joy, those gifts multiply themselves, both in the giving that you give of your time and talent and of your treasure. So with with giving with joy, I put to you that there is no goal that is too high for our community if we give with joy. The goal I leave you with is the same goal I started with, but it's evolved a little bit. It is to have 100% stewardship. That doesn't just mean that 100% of us fill out pledge forms, although that's a wonderful goal and we should do that. It's that each of us individually, when we give, we give 100%. We give with passion. We give with love. I think it's appropriate that it's Veterans Day weekend. And I think about our veterans, and I think about the line from Scripture that says, No greater love hath, hath a man than to lay down his life for his friends. Our veterans don't try to justify themselves like we heard in the Gospel lesson today. They don't say, I'll give 10%. They've, they've been given one life, and they're going to give 100% if it need be to give that life for their friends. I ask that we consider in all of our giving to give with that same mentality for 100% giving and 100% stewardship. So with those two things in mind, as we finish 2018 and go into 2019, I ask that you give... Continue to give in 2018 and give in 2019 of your time, talent, and treasure 
this way, with joy and passionately, with the same passion that David and Anna Cuba have for our youngest Orthodox Christians, with the same passion that Tula Capitanos has for our seniors. And folks, if we can, with the same joy and passion that our beloved deacon gives to those that are less fortunate than us. Deacon holds up, deacon's life holds up a mirror to us as a community. Deacon, through St. John the Merciful and otherwise, has lived the example of being a neighbor from today's gospel lesson. I ask that we try to reflect his gifts and try to do the same in our giving of our time, talent, and treasure. I thank you all for your love and support over the past eight years. May God continue to give us strength, wisdom, and patience to accomplish his goals for his glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, John. Good morning. Morning. I'll follow. John is always a tough act to follow speaking, but I can tell you that I became our ladies philopticus bake sale chair four years ago, so half of the time that John did. And I can tell you that I did not have facial hair when this started. <laughs> <laughs> and God willing, we'll be doing this for another many more years. Um, so, so John. Our, our wonderful stewardship chair couldn't have said the words well enough. I would say that what I have learned in my time that I've spent with the ladies baking is that there are many things that can be learned, but what I learned, I learned in kindergarten, oddly enough, that God loves a cheerful giver. And I can tell you that... When the ladies get together and when they work and when we share camaraderie and friendship and we work with our hands for those in need, that this is just, you know, great joy and great cheerfulness and heartwarming in what we do. So I invite all of you to join with us. I will also put a caveat that our backs get kind of sore sometimes, so if we grumble a little bit, it's about our backs, not about the work that we're doing, but it's with great joy that the women work. Um, December 6th and 7th, they're the dates of our annual bake sale. It is our biggest fundraiser. We have some little things going on during the year, but this is really our biggest one. The deadlines for pre-orders is today, so it really helps us as we wrap up baking that we know what you want so we can have everything ready. I regret to say that we sold out of the small pastizio, so if you wanted small pastizio, I'll put you on a list. If we have time, we'll get together and bake some more, but I can't guarantee it as we move forward, but we made, we made 98 of them and we sold all of them. Um, so come to see us in the hall. We have also meal tickets if you want to invite a friend, a family member, if you want to give it to your neighbor, co-workers, we'll have some meal tickets available for you. We will be selling lamb this year until it sells out, along with the chicken and pastizio, which we have traditionally. Um, next week, we'll be starting the raffle. We have some fantastic gifts on the raffle um, that the ladies donated. We have a mink coat that Joyce Kikas donated. I saw Kathy Demirza somewhere back here. She donated um, just a beautiful necklace. Um, Sydney, and, Sydney Langford donated a pet gift basket for all your pet type needs, um, among several others. I know I didn't mention all of them, but they're beautiful selection of gifts, Greek salad that Roberta donated. So please, um, starting next week, everyone should be buying at least one raffle ticket um, you'll enjoy the gifts that we have. I hate following both of them. But, but, um, <laughs> but this truly is a labor of love. All the women have worked so hard. Okay. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that what the donations or what you, where your money goes We've assisted many people in our community this past year alone. We've sent children to a special camp that have autism for the first time. 
We've paid for all health services in a medical clinic for one day. Um, we've developed a parent handbook for parents with a Down syndrome child and provided a teen resource cart for children going through treatment. We have assisted the food banks for those affected by Hurricane Florence as well as the Salvation Army. And this Christmas, we will be purchasing winter clothing for at least 12 children. And we've, over the past five years, we've given over $100,000 to help those in our community. And we can only continue to do this with your help. So if you will please support the bake sale, bring your family, your coworkers to the Holiday Cafe, buy a raffle ticket, any amount helps. Thank you. Good morning again. My name is Father Gregory Georgiou, and I'm grateful once again to be able to serve, and especially to serve as you see um, members of your community and how much all you, as a community, all of you do. And I must say that there's I've, some of the saddest people I've seen in life in the church, the saddest, by far the saddest, are people who no longer can serve the church, either because, um, generally because of their health, and so that is some of the saddest people I've ever seen because they love the church. And so for those of us now, by God's grace, who have the ability to serve the church in whatever way that is, whether it's to give, whether it's to bake or to buy, whatever it happens to be, truly it is a privilege to do. Because when I'm in this community and I acknowledge whether it's the chanters, the parish council, the choir, and I say, I appreciate what you've done or I've noticed what you've done, almost always their response is two words, thank God. It's not thank you, Father Gregory, it's no, thank God. In other words, that they have the ability, you have the ability to do these things. So that's really what I was thinking about as John was speaking and our Philoptikos was speaking is, okay, what a privilege it is, truly a privilege to be able to give and to serve. So that's what was going through my mind as um, your three members of your community spoke. I have no further, I have nothing else, so if you need anything, please let me know. Um, but please come forward for your endeavor, and I look forward to um, spending time next door.